when we're performing corridor selection for a highway project, a lot of times we're thinking about things that we need to avoid. And so in this video, I'll talk about some of the things that we typically try to avoid when we're selecting a corridor and also look at some roads that have been relocated or redesigned and, and the reason for those redesigns or relocations. The human and natural environmental impacts are huge and can be huge that are associated with infrastructure. When we look at some of the specific elements, sometimes if you encroach on a property and just take parking spaces, that may mean that you've impacted the whole property because of non-conforming zoning. So sometimes even though the building may be saved, if you're looking at a, a business that's on the corner of a, a roadway and you need to expand turning lanes, widen the road, uh, taking those parking spaces may mean that the highway agency needs to pay for the whole property. Cemeteries and grave sites are also another very expensive um, type of impact to have and the cost is typically around $10,000 per grave to relocate them. Billboards are another very expensive thing to move or relocate as well as cell phone towers and other utilities. And in addition to environmental impacts, highway agencies will also consider the safety cost user cost in terms of travel time and delay efficiency, the capital cost, including construction and right of way, and the maintenance cost, uh, the long-term long life cycle cost of operating the facility. In terms of some of the environmental issues and topics that may be evaluated, both on the human and natural environment side, include social and economic impacts, relocation, so if people reside in properties that need to be relocated, you need to be able to provide them with equivalent style of accommodations within that same community. Air quality and noise impacts, energy impacts, impacts to rivers, floodplains, coastal zones, wetlands, land use impacts, joint development, historical and archaeological preservation, water quality, threatened and, and endangered species, agricultural lands, construction impacts, impacts to pedestrians and bicyclists, wildlife and stream impacts, visual impacts, and hazardous waste sites. And even though you may think that hazardous waste sites may be uncommon uh, along a highway corridor, one of the most common types of hazardous sites are actually old gas stations, and those can cost more than $100,000 to mitigate those impacts. So if you're looking at a at taking a two-lane road and widening into a four-lane road and there was a, a gas station from 50 years ago uh, that was just adjacent to that roadway, that would obviously be in the zone of, of being taken by the new roadway as it gets widened. And those old gas tanks are probably pretty rusted out if they're even still operational, but leaching could have happened into the soil from those hazardous materials and it would need to be dug up, excavated, and disposed of properly. So that can be a very common impact on, um, on the cost of the project and on your, your corridor selection process. So here's an example. We're, we're looking at this median in Gaffney, South Carolina, and we can see along this corridor it's a pretty standard median except in this area it widens out and so we're going to keep looking a little more closely and see why that may be happening and so here's zoomed in a little further so we're looking at, at this area in particular now and this stand of trees is what we're really going to focus on and if we get a street level view here we actually see this is an old family cemetery and so you can see the importance of this cemetery, its cultural historical value, uh, the expense of, of moving those, relocating those graves. Uh, this roadway, the, the median was actually widened. The design was changed in this area to accommodate leaving that grave site as is. Here's another example where the median was widened to accommodate a cemetery. This one was adjacent to a, a larger cemetery and church, and you can see the median there provides uh, the ability to have not disturbed that cemetery. Here's a street level view of that cemetery. 
And this is now a map. This is looking at roads that have been relocated, redesigned, rebuilt. This is an article from Joe Weber uh, entitled Route Change on the American Freeway System. And the size of the bubble indicates the the length of those route changes. And this is just focused on, on the freeway system. So in total, there were 563 miles of route category route changes over this time period. Uh, that account that's approximately one percent of the length of the American freeway system. And we can see the different categories that they fall into, whether it's a new interchange or a bridge, a bypass of a tunnel, redesigning curves and hills, relocating the roadway, uh, which was the biggest one, or abandoning that section of the roadway. So here's some specific examples, and even though as the interstate was being built to high design standards, they were 1950s design standards, um, and often those interstates where possible incorporated existing roads that had already had sharp curves or steep hills, and so improving those over the years has led to uh, relocations that that were necessary to bring those up to more modern standards. So uh, in this article, um, some of these examples are provided where roads with multiple curves were consolidated to, to one larger, um, smoother curve. Here's some additional examples looking at roads that were relocated to accommodate uh, the Pentagon or an airport as examples of, of reasons why an interstate may have been moved and you can see how that has changed the design and, and layout of those freeways. Here's some other examples. This one, if we look at the top one, this is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And so they have a, the existing interstate route was, was one of the first freeways in, in the state and did not have and does not have the, the same design standards that modern freeways do. Uh, there's some sharp curves, there's uh, closely spaced interchanges. And so when they, when the new route in the early 90s was constructed south of Winston-Salem, that route was then renamed uh, Business I-40, or Business 40, and the, the new route took over the I-40 designation. And we have see similar locations that have that same type of, of uh, design where there was a, an existing route through a downtown or closer to a downtown that's been redesignated as the business alternate uh, to that interstate. And this is a map uh, that the author of the article put together showing locations that are likely to have uh, changes to their route in the coming years based on future design plans and upgrades at interstates in these locations. So these are just some, some examples, again, summarizing we looked at some of the, we talked about some of the ways that, some of the things to avoid. And we saw examples in particular of cemeteries where the, the design of the roadway was, was changed to accommodate those cemeteries and not disturb those cemeteries. But there's also uh, other natural environment and human environment considerations that, that a roadway may need to avoid. And then we also looked here from the article in the Journal of Transport Geography of some of the reasons that existing interstates freeways were modified to improve them.